my name is Gus Malzahn. I'm the head football coach of the Springdale Bulldogs in Springdale, Arkansas. Today we're going to talk about the hurry up no huddle and how to practice it. We're going to actually take you to the practice field and show you how we implement our inside drill, our outside drill, and our team versus air drill to help our offense move at a faster pace on Friday nights. Hopefully you can take some things from this video to help your offense move at a faster pace. First thing we want to talk about here is the hurry up no huddle philosophy. Our philosophy is to change the dynamics of the traditional game of football by running our offense at a two minute hurry up pace for the entire game. This will turn the game into five quarters of actual playing time instead of four and if we feel like if we can get to that fifth quarter we definitely have a huge advantage. Going into each game we have three goals and they all kind of work together but if we can accomplish each of three goals it's definitely going to increase our chances of winning the football game. The first goal is to speed up the game. The way we're going to speed up the game is we're going to snap the ball within five seconds after the referee puts the, the football in play. Also, to help the referees out, we're going to hand the football to them each time. We're not going to leave the ball on the ground and, uh, so we can get that play going as fast as possible. Here's some actual game footage to kind of show you the speed of the game that we're looking for. A long pass play that we completed. First thing our player wants to give the ball to the official. As we pan to the left, you'll be able to see our play caller. There's our signaler coming to play. He's already signaling the formation. There's our board. Now he's signaling the play. So that's a pretty good job of getting the information into it. So now it's just a matter of waiting on the referee to spot the ball. Let's we'll see how quick we get it to snap. Put the ball in play. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. That's a real good job. The second one is the length of the game. And we're talking about the actual playing time. Uh, in a high school game of 48 minutes, you're going to play anywhere from 7 to 8 minutes of actual playing time. We're going to try to add 2 to 3 minutes to, to, to that number. That doesn't sound like much, but we're talking about a whole fifth quarter. And we talk to our kids about getting to the fifth quarter and actually winning the fifth quarter instead of the fourth quarter. Uh, we definitely, if you do have this philosophy, you have to have the mentality that, the mentality that if you're going to get beat, you could get beat by a lot. And I don't know about you, but, but those ones that have close losses are a, a lot harder for me to deal with. Uh, than those, those blowouts uh, of a big number score. The third goal is to mentally and physically wear down your opponent. We want to keep constant pressure on our opponents, uh, take chances on offense. And I know most coaches love to take chances. This philosophy fits you just right if you, if you like to take chances. Also, defense. Uh, it encourages you to have an aggressive defense, uh, uh, a blitzing defense. The worst thing that can happen in this type of game is for the other team to control the, the pace of the game, slow it down, and get us out of our momentum. So it encourages you to be very aggressive on defense, also on special teams. We've got four different onside kicks we use. We use starburst on kickoff return. We'll use double reverse on punt return. So we really try to keep constant pressure in all three areas of our opponent. Uh, also, if we're going to do this, you got to implement the hurry up, no huddle pace in your practice drills to get your kids in shape. And once they see the benefits of this, they're going to work harder. And, and we found that there's great result after they uh, they actually see themselves mentally and physically wearing down. The, the best example of accomplishing these three goals was the 1999 quarterfinal playoff in City, which ended a mind-boggling 70-64 victory. You're probably wondering just how bad both defenses were. Believe it or not, they came in the game giving up just four points a game on defense. We came in the game giving up just 12. It was just one of the wildest games I've ever seen. 
The Dragons have the ball in Shiloh territory, second and three. It's going to be again to Marcus Godfrey. He's running out around the left side. He's in the secondary. You're not going to touch him. Touchdown, Johnson City. Breaking off the left side is Godfrey. He's got to get outside a man. Godfrey's going to go the distance. You're not going to touch him. Freezing. Big chase, 92 yards. It's 16 to nothing. And you can't find an unhappy Junction City fan. It's a blowout right now in the first quarter. Godfrey bouncing outside again. Someone's got to bring him down. He's out around the right side. One man to beat him. He can't catch him either. Godfrey's going to go for another touchdown. This is unbelievable, folks. It's a little double handoff. It's two. Another halfback this time. He tries to break outside. He's still got one man to beat. It's another touchdown. He spins arms the Shiloh defender. And Shiloh can't catch him. Touchdown, Junction City. Lashley will audible. Looks like Andrew Crater, that left wing back position. One back formation. They fake to David Meyer. Rat Lashley rolling left. Throwing left. Complete straight catch by Andrew Crater. He's Touchdown, Shiloh! Shiloh Christian around the 14. They show blitz to the Dragons. Lashley gets out of it. He's rolling left. He's got a man deep. It's Brad Godwin. Can he come up with it? Touchdown, Shiloh! Inside the 20. They fake the hand in the backfield. Rhett Lashley is going. He's looking towards Coleman there in the end zone. Touchdown, Shiloh! Coleman there from 20 yards out. Touchdown, Shiloh! The Saints take their first lead of the game with about two minutes left in the game. Okay, here's our practice schedule, and, and what we're going to be talking about is during the season. If you look up here, this is our Monday. Uh, we come out in short shoulder pads and helmets. At the very end, we do run uh, four full gassers on Monday after we practice. If you'll notice, uh, we let our individual coaches actually stretch our players. Uh, then we do some basic individual fundamental things all the way across. Uh, in individual offense, I try to get my quarterback with each one of my skill guys for five minutes to work on one or two little things uh, as far as whether it's a, uh, a specific route that we need to work on or a uh, specific running play. Uh, also, our offensive line, you'll see one-on-one -on -one pass protection for five minutes, and then we'll do some team pass. When I put team pass, that means our protections with our, with our full back, and uh, most time we are a uh, one-back protection. We do do some empty protection also. But uh, till 3:10, we'll do individual. We'll do that every day. And then at 3:15, uh, we do our inside drill versus dummies on Monday, and uh, our outside drill versus scouts. What we'll do is we'll do our number one. Uh, we'll go inside first. So our starters, with our starting quarterback and starting backs, we'll go the inside uh, versus dummies. Our number two, we'll go the outside with our passing game coordinator, and then we will go for uh, a good. Uh, 15 minutes and we will switch that where the twos will go inside and the ones will go outside and uh, one thing we found is uh, you know the number twos are getting the same reps as number one and if you'll notice uh, our, our inside drill we'll go get the even front on Monday and get our kids programmed the, the even front our outside drill will go four base passes versus cover three so on Monday all we're going to do in outside versus cover three, and we do have uh, four of our base plays that we like to run versus cover three. Now, we have the ability to run all of our passing in versus cover three, but there's certain things we do like better than others. But that, that will be uh, cover three on Monday. Now, after we get a full dose of inside-outside, take a short break, and then we'll do a team screen period. And we have one specific screen that we're going to run on Monday for our outside screen. A lot of people call it tunnel screen. And we're going to get a good uh, 15 minutes on screens. We're a big screen team. We throw the football. And if you throw the football, you're going to have to have screens. And we feel like that's really helped us. And we'll do our, if you'll notice, we'll do our one. Also give our, our, our uh, five minutes for our two. So our twos are getting a lot of reps also. Right after that, we're going to go team offense. Now notice, we're going to introduce our opponent's base defense and game plan. Up here on inside outside, we didn't even get into what our opponents will do. We just want to make ourselves better versus basic coverage rules and a basic front. So we'll introduce the opponent's defense uh, they're, they're and put our game plan. If there's any specific blitzes that we want to check out of or check into, uh, and also give their tendencies during this team period. Take a short break, and then we're going to go special plays. And a lot of people think we run a lot of trick plays. But uh, we call them special plays because we work on them all the time. So we're going to do two different uh, special plays as far as that goes. And remember, it fits into our philosophy. We're going to try to put as much uh, 
pressure on the opponent's defense as possible. And just by having these special plays, we'll run one to two each week. It's just something special they have to work on. And they know our kids like running, and we've been pretty effective with these special plays, too. The last 10 minutes of each practice, we're going to run the hurry up, no huddle. Team versus air. Now, when you're first starting it out in two a days and in the summer, if you get you got a chance to practice during the summer, I would do the team versus air the whole time in two a days and more than 10 minutes. This is just 10 minutes each day that gets our coaches uh, you know, acclimated to the game speed we're talking about to call plays and our, our kids to understand. And then at the very end, we're going to also condition after that. And if you notice, the, the inside drill, outside drill, and then the, the team versus air, that's all conditioning. But uh, like we said earlier, we're going to really try to stress the, the conditioning. And, and one thing we found, you know, it used to be tough to get kids to run hard at the end of practice, but our guys are really bought into what we're doing and the conditioning. We don't, never have to encourage them to run hard. They're, they're always trying to get themselves better, so that's real encouraging as a coach. Okay, we're going to move on to our Tuesday. And this is also during uh, the, the year. Tuesday is going to be full pads. We're going to do four full length gassers at the end of practice. Same as, as Monday, we're going to stretch with our individual coaches. We're going to work on some different routes than what we did on Monday. An individual quarterback will also be with each one of my skill guys for five minutes to work on a specific route or a specific uh, run play. Same for the uh, lineman, one-on-one -on -one pass protection and team pass protection as that goes. Now, inside drill versus scout, same as, as Monday, ones and twos. Uh, outside drill versus scout. Now, if you notice, four base runs versus odd front. So we're going to be able to execute versus odd front. And this is pro tempo, so the tempo is no bags. I mean, we're going to go knock up, and it's going to be live off the football, but no tackling. There are four base plays versus two or four, just a two safety look. And we're going to run, and it says four base plays, and there's four plays that we like to run two and four, but we're also going to have the ability to throw in all of our plays uh, versus two and four just so we'll know the, uh, how to react in different reads as far as that's concerned. The next thing, inside and outside drill, we'll switch ones and twos, same thing, post-style tempo. Take a break. Next thing, we're going to go into our team screen period. Uh, and we will go 15 minutes on inside screen today and try to perfect that. Uh, we got our ones going for 10 minutes, our twos going for five minutes, and that will be also pro style tempo. Next thing is our team offense. If you'll notice, opponents base defense with blitzes. We uh, should on Tuesday be able to recognize their, their certain tendencies, recognize their blitzes. My quarterback should be able to uh, check out of a bad play or a certain tendency as far as a blitz check to a play that we, we like. So we'll go a good 15 minutes with the opponent's base defense, and that will be also pro-style tempo. Come down to our special plays. We'll go two different plays uh, this day, and we may even refresh on the, on the Monday special plays as far as that goes. And then we'll finish up with our team versus air. We'll go once for five minutes, twos for five minutes, and then we'll condition at the end on two. Okay, our Wednesday during the season, full pads, uh, four full-length gassers. And from time to time, we'll do hundreds just to mix things up. Uh, you'll notice, same as the first two days, stretch with individual uh, coaches. We'll, we'll do a little bit different route as far as our quarterback with each one of these. Our, uh, our line will do uh, stance, step drill, one-on-one -on -one pass protection, and team pass protection. Again, we'll come back with inside and outside drill. Ones and twos, just like we've been doing, it'll be pro tempo. We will go four base runs versus both fronts with blitzes. So we'll throw a lot at them uh, as far as uh, the different blitzes come on on Wednesday. And then our four base passes versus man coverage. So we do have four specific plays we like to do versus man. And our quarterback, we do have a lot of plays that if we see zone that we will check, check out of that we normally use. So this is a good Wednesday. Uh, we're going to go just against man in outside. Uh, then 15 minutes, we're going to switch ones and twos, take a break, and then we're going to go team run period versus opponent's base defense. So this is just going to be team run versus opponent's opponent base defense with their specific blitzes that they like to, to use. And once again, our quarterback by Wednesday should be able to check out of the plays that we want him to check out of and check to the plays that we want. Okay, and then after that, we're going to go team offense versus opponent base defense with blitzes. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and throw in our play action. We're going to throw in uh, our
our screens and just are really pretty much a total game plan even though we don't specifically change game plan from week to week there is a couple little wrinkles that we do like to put in so a team offense versus opponent's base defense with them blitzing that's also pro style tempo come back there's our special plays again why add two more and really we probably only have about ten special plays so even though it says add two each day a lot of times you know we get to run these plays two and three times each week and you'll see that just one from the special plays then we'll come back and we'll do our team versus air and that will be ones for five minutes twos for five minutes and then end up conditioning and that's your Wednesday now our Thursday during the season if you'll notice it's just it's shoulder pads and helmets uh, from time to time, just depends. We'll go no shoulder pads and just helmets. Uh, we'll stretch as a team, just like we would before the game. Uh, then we'll come back and we'll do inside drill. We'll go straight to inside, no individual, just to refresh versus the opponent's base defense. Outside drill versus the opponent's base coverage. So we get real specific on that day as far as our opponents are concerned. And then we'll go ones and then we'll go twos and switch. Uh, same thing, just come right back for another uh, good 15 minutes. Then we'll work on red zone offense. We do that for 10 minutes, and I think that that's really helped us, especially you get down the red zone, condenses the field. You're going to have to be real specific on what you like to do, and that's been real good to us. So 10 minutes on the red zone, and that is just one. Then we'll go a good 15 minutes, team versus air. Now, during this period also, we also go team versus scout. Uh, and we'll put a scout team up there, make it look just like a game, and that's like our dress rehearsal. Uh, we will uh, have our kicking game, we'll rush our uh, field goal team out there, our punt team out there, and we'll go a good up and down the field at least twice, uh, and then we'll probably, you know, I did, didn't put twos, but a lot of times we'll end with, with the twos that last five minutes, and just make sure they understand, and we want to make it look just like a game, but go at a faster pace on Thursday. When implementing the hurry up into your practice, uh, we use the same drills everyone else does, inside, outside, and team drill. The way we implement the hurry up into our inside drill is, is our running game coordinator is actually in charge of this drill. Uh, he will actually call the plays or signal the plays into the quarterback. And a good thing to do just for practice for the running game coordinator and also practice for your quarterback is actually signal the plays in uh, and then have the quarterback verbally uh, call out the play after that. Also, we have a scout team coach involved. He'll stand about 10 yards behind where the ball is. Uh, spotted, he will have two footballs. He will act as a referee, so after our running back runs the, the play, he will actually give the ball to the ref and the scout team coach. The other football, the scout team coach will throw to the center, lined up in the same spot every time. We will try to run uh, this uh, at a pace uh, a lot faster in a game. And what we try to do is if, if we are taking more than 25 seconds after one play is run, then you're running this drill uh, way too slow. So uh, another thing, too, is it, the running game coordinator is also in charge of the com competitiveness of this drill. And uh, if he wants to be a little more competitive, he can stand back there by the scout team coach and actually signal the play into the quarterback and all of the players so the defense won't know uh, what's coming. And we use that from time to time. But this is a drill that uh, everyone uses, the inside. But the, but the advantage we feel like we have is we're getting more reps in, and we're also teaching our kids to go at a faster pace than, than the regular game. We want the regular game to actually seem uh, slow to, to the players. Another, another thing, too, uh, I would also either put uh, my scout team in beanies or our opposite color jersey just so your running backs will understand the running lanes and, and then cut off the defenders. But this is a, a good drill. Uh, we run it just about every day in practice. Okay, here's our inside drill versus our scout defense. You can see our running game coordinator. And that's our running game coach beside him. He's already called uh, the play verbally to the quarterback. The first quarterback's got the formation of play already in. Okay, running our play. And if you'll notice, the uh, scout team coach acts as a referee right even with the center about five to six yards 
players after they run the ball will hand the ball to the, acting as a referee. He has two footballs. And he'll throw one directly to the center. The center's going to set up each time in the same spot in the inside drill. And we're just going to try to get as many reps as possible uh, and be able to execute the play. And if you'll notice, the center hustles back. He's already told the quarterback to play. He's already verbally called out the play. So we're just waiting to run it. Now, if uh, we ever have to step in and, and give an example or anything, the uh, running game coordinator will step in real quick and he'll demonstrate what he's wanting and he'll get out uh, of, the, of the drill as soon as possible. We do a lot of our individual drill uh, drills in, in individual time. Now, if you'll notice, we switch in personnel. It shouldn't take too long. They run in. Also, our uh, scout team coach will have a whistle, and uh, he'll act as a referee blowing the whistle so they won't stop until the whistle blows. And if you want this drill to be competitive, kind of like we said earlier, get your scout team, or excuse me, get your running game coordinator back by your scout team coach, and he can signal the plays in the line and the backs. You can make this drill as competitive as you want. If you're going against dummies like we would on Monday right now, but you can uh, go against a scout team versus pro tempo. And like I said, once again, put your ring game coordinator back by your scout team coach. We're trying to get as many reps as we can and also uh, get our kids programmed to go at a fast pace so the actual games will seem slow. The next drill that we'll do, talk about here, is the outside drill. I know everyone uh, puts this in their practice plan, but we're going to try to run this uh, at a lot faster pace. You'll see down at the very bottom, uh, the passing game coordinator will be in charge of this drill. Uh, we will also have a scout team coach who will be standing somewhere around 10 yards right over the center. He will also have two footballs. He will act as a referee, so as soon as the ball is caught, our players will give the ball uh, to the scout team coach, and he will throw the second ball to the center. And we also always have a center uh, in our outside drill, and this kind of helps him. We're a 95% shotgun team anyway, so it gives him a lot of reps as far as that concerns. A passing game coordinator's alignment will be about 10 yards to the left-hand side of the quarterback, just like the inside drill. Either he can verbally call the play out, or if he needs a little practice, he can actually signal the plays uh, into your quarterback and have the quarterback verbally uh, call out uh, what the play will be. As soon as a play uh, is run uh, and the ball is thrown, if you look at the second uh, example here, uh, we want our our receivers to hustle back to where the ball is being spotted, which will be in the center of the field in, in this drill, because they do not know the formation, what side they need to go on. The very first thing our quarterback, as you can see the squiggly line, as soon as the play is over, our quarterback is going to verbally yell out the formation, whether it's left or right. And just to save a little time, we want our players to go right back to where the ball is and not right back to where their position is uh, until they hear the formation. And then you'll see at the very top, uh, after receiving the information on the formation from the quarterback, they will go to their spot. And as they're going to their spot, they will be listening for the play. And so by the time they are set, the play and the formation should already be ready, and we're ready just for the referee to uh, put the ball on play. Now, the uh, speed of this drill, we're going to go as fast as we possibly can. The only thing I tell the quarterback is make sure everybody's set. Uh, before we snap the football, and this is real good. Uh, we want to get as many reps as we possibly can, and, and we use this drill the same way. If there is an incomplete pass, we have a, an extra player or coach going after. We want our players to get back to the line of scrimmage while they're a little bit tired to see if uh, you know if they can think, and uh, when they're a little bit tired. And this has been a real good drill for us uh, to be able to execute. You know, when we talk about getting to that fifth quarter, it's been a great drill for us. 
Uh, also, if you want to control the competitiveness of this drill, your passing game coordinator can stand back behind the scout team coach and actually signal the play in to uh, all the players. And, and you know, not only the quarterback needs to know the signals, but we have all of our skill guys need to know each one of our signals so they can execute the play. Uh, and then common sense, you know, definitely your defensive scout team needs to be either wearing beanies or a different colored uh, uh, jersey. Now, one thing that we do is a little bit more unique than a lot of teams do. Uh, our different days of the week will have different coverages. For instance, on Mondays, we will go against a cover three. Uh, Tuesdays, we'll go against a two safety look, either cover two or cover four. And on Wednesdays, we'll go against man to man. And I think this has really helped us uh, as far as just our basic rules and, and, and our reads. We don't go into a game uh, wondering how a team, or trying to guess how a team's going to play us. So each day of the week, we've seen every coverage, uh, so it's not a shock to our system as far as the coverage, as far as our plays, and we'll be able to execute all of our plays versus any coverage. So this is how we uh, implement our uh, outside drill uh, in the hurry up no huddle. Okay, here's our outside drill versus scout. That'll be coming back. We've already called the formation. Now he's got the plane. If you'll notice, our passing game coordinator is set up about 10 yards right to the left of the drill. The play caller, we, we switch back from inside to outside and usually sticks with the ones. If you'll notice, the tempo we've got not a uh, pro style tempo it's just a regular tempo we're, we're playing a cover three we're acting like it's a monday and if you ever want a uh, pro style tempo or live tempo you have your passing game coordinator line up by the scout team uh, coach and he can actually signal plays into all of the skill players if you want the tempo to be, be a little bit better they will go into the whistle blows. There's the scout team coach acting as a referee. They're throwing the football. This program for players to hand the ball to the referee. That's a pretty good pace. And if you're ever taking 25 seconds or more than 25 seconds uh, in between each play, it's way too slow. This is the pace you're really looking for. We want our kids to be able to think quick when they get a little bit winded, see if they can still execute. They're an incomplete pass. We've got a ball boy going after it. We ought to hustle back. Switching formations. We've got the formation. Now he's got the, the play called already. Just waiting on the outside receiver to get set. All right, he's in his cadence. Complete pass, ought to be hustling back. Okay, also the uh, passing game coordinator, he can either verbally give the plays to the quarterback or even if he's standing back there, practice signaling the plays in to the quarterback to give him more practice. Like I say, you can see there's more reps, same drill that everyone else does, people get more reps. And if a coach needs to step in, he'll do it real quick and demonstrate. A lot of the individual little technique things we take care of in our individual time. It's very good condition. The next drill we're going to talk about in the hurry up no huddle is team versus air. Now this is the first drill that uh, you really need to get, get your whole group out there with all your coaches and your players and do a dress rehearsal and move up and down the field. Uh, what we're going to have is we're going to have 11 players. Uh, we're going to have a scout team coach, and, and once again, he's going to act as a referee, and he's also going to spot the ball. Now, a little bit different than the inside and outside drill where we're going to put the ball in the same spot every time, the, the scout team coach is going to actually act as a referee. So if it's an incomplete pass, he's going to bring the ball back to the line of scrimmage. If it's a pass play by the numbers, he's going to put the ball in the hash. He will also have the whistle, and he'll determine uh, how far uh, in a running play, how far he went, and we want to make it actual, just like an actual game. The only thing is we're going to go at a lot faster pace than an actual game, and our goal is to, for the, the game, the actual game, to seem slow to our players. Uh, real important, 
it's real easy for the players to get this uh, go up and down the field and, and understand what to do. This is great practice for your coaches. And if you'll notice the alignment of our coaches here, we have our signaler and he's closest to the quarterback. Uh, he's going to actually signal the plays in, uh, the formation first, then he's going to signal a play, and then if there's any motion, he'll signal that in. So that's a pretty quick quick way to, uh, to get that done. The play caller is right beside the signaler, and uh, he has a good visual of what's going on. Uh, he will give the information to the signaler, uh, and then you'll see the running game coordinator. He's also to the far outside. Now, I'll tell you what, the, the running game coordinator it gives him a good view of the front uh, of the front seven or, or whatever's in the box. He's responsible for, for telling the play card the, the, uh, how many's in the box, uh, what the blitzes are, and he's also in charge of protection. So we're very uh, consistent on our alignment on the sidelines. Another thing, too, on that signaler, I would either have, have him in a different colored shirt or a different colored hat so the quarterback can easily uh, see uh, where the signal's coming from. Alignment, as far as your, your uh, players are concerned, is the quarterback, we have him align about 10 yards behind where the ball is. And as soon as the play is over, he automatically gets his eyes on the signaler. And, so, and we start out where he actually verbally calls out the formation and verbally calls out the play. Uh, if you're ever in a uh, uh, stadium that's real loud or echoes or, or there's a band or whatever, you need to have the ability for all 11 to understand and to watch the signaler uh, so you do not have to always do it verbally. We change it up from time to time uh, where there's no verbal uh, uh, call at all. And you, you can either get in your stadium, turn the music on loud or whatever you, whatever you got to do as far as that goes. But we're going to run this pace <coughs> as fast as we possibly can. Now, this same drill, we will go up and down the field just like a regular game. Uh, we'll have the punt team out there. We'll throw the punt team, say it's third down and 12. Then we'll, we'll rush the, the field goal team out there. And what we usually do is we'll go about, we'll start the 20, we'll go all the way to the other end zone, then we'll flip it around, and we'll come back the other way. Uh, and then, of course, the alignment will switch for your coaches, and we'll go back down, and we'll usually go down and back for each group, and then I'll put a second group uh, out there, too. To take this drill to another level, after you get fairly comfortable, run this drill, you can put a scout team out there and just have your scout team be real basic. But they've got to understand, too, that they've got to hustle to get a line just like a regular uh, defensive team would be. And this is a good drill uh, as far as that goes, and we do a lot of that, uh, especially on Thursdays. And we'll be talking about uh, how we practice and how we, we put in each one of these drills. But, but this is where I'd start the very first time, if you're, if you're going to switch the hurry up, get out there and just have a couple little plays. I just have two or three plays. I have one formation uh, to be a positive experience for your players. And it, one thing you'll find, it's real simple for your players to catch up and, and, and understand this. The big challenge you're going to have is for your coaching staff to be able to get used to thinking quick. And, and like I said, through these drills, the inside, the outside, the team versus air, it gives your coaches more practice to execute uh, this type uh, or your offense at this type of pace. Okay, this is our team versus air. We want to make it look uh, exactly like a game. Just go at a faster pace. So a rollout. Okay, if you'll notice, our scout team coach is acting as a referee. He's got two footballs. He marks one. He wants to mark it just like a referee would. And he gets back 10 yards behind the ball, in front of the ball. If you notice, our coaches are aligned just like they would be in a game. As soon as the ball is spotted, our, our center is going to line up, our guards will line up, and then our tackles will line up on the guards. Our backs and receivers, we, we tell them as soon as the ball is, is blown down, they go to a central location where the ball is spotted, and that way if we're switching formations, they'll already be in that area. Our quarterback is going to line about 10 yards behind where the ball is spotted. He'll be looking directly at the signaler, and he will get the formation first and then the play, and then if there's any motion, that'll be the third thing. This is very good practice, not only for your players, but for your coaches. Uh, to get them used to, to calling plays quick, to have the ability to think quick, and the, the more practice for them, the better.
once again, if we get going at the pace like this, the actual games uh, seem slow, and that's kind of our goal there. We're switching formations. We've already got the play called. We just need to get lined up. Now, also, too, on Thursdays, we'll also throw in our punt team uh, at certain times and then our, our field goal team. Now, if you'll notice, we've got people switching in and out. The quarterback doesn't slow down and wait for anything. It's, it's the replacement's responsibility to yell the first name of the guy they're going in for, and they should hustle on and hustle off so it doesn't slow us down at all. Now, in this drill, if we ever do have any incompletions, they're, they're taught to go straight back to line scrimmage like a regular game, and we will get a ball boy to go after the incomplete passes. This is our team versus scout. We actually uh, get our scout team out there. Still running the hurry up. There's an incomplete pass. You got to hustle back to the line of scrimmage. We got a ball boy going to get the ball. So it doesn't slow down the drill. It's just like the team versus air, but we got the scout team out there to make our. Uh, our offensive guys have to think about the rules and reads. Still have the uh, scout team coach acting as uh, the uh, umpire. Now the tempo of this drill is, is just what you see. We don't we don't get out there and run any kind of pro style tempo with a hurry up. We just have the, the defensive guys uh, line up in their, their spots, whether it's a, a four two or a four one specific team uh, that we're playing that week will we'll run their base defense, especially on Thursdays. This drill. We've got the play called already. You can tell once again this is going a lot faster pace than the actual game. Great conditioning and also very good for our coaches. thinking quick, calling plays quick. If you notice, we've got our three coaches over there. We've got our signaler, we've got our play caller, we've got our running game coordinator in the exact order they would be on Friday nights for communication. And if you can see, we've got our uh, signaler in a, separate, in a different colored shirt uh, than the rest of us so the quarterback can easily see uh, where the signal's coming from. And we also try to stay about 10 yards behind each play as he's signaling this is a pretty good pace right here if we want to switch anyone and out same thing quarterback doesn't slow down at all it's the, their responsibility to listen for the formation the play and then the motions and really if you've got a slow center he'll slow the drill down uh, quite a bit. Your center is the key. He's got to go exactly where the ball is spotted and understand that if it's outside the hash that he needs to go exactly to that spot on the hash and wait for the ball to be spotted. The quicker he gets set up, the quicker everyone else can. And that's team versus scout. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you can take some of the things we talked about on how to practice the hurry up no huddle to help your offense be more successful and score more points. If you ever have any questions, feel free to contact us here at Springdale High School. Best of luck to you next year.